In this video, I will be explaining how we used to work with JavaScript before module bundlers like Webpack came into existence. So I will explain the example with old approach and then we will convert the same example to use the model bundlers and then see what problems model bundler like Webpack is trying to solve. So here is one example. It's very simple HTML file and in the body tag what I have done is I have added this script. So basically it is loading this lodash from the CDN. This is we used to do before the webpack, right? We used to add the script tags right in the body tag. And our custom JavaScript code can be written in another script tag like this. So lodash is a very popular JavaScript library. It allows you to work uh, very seamlessly with the number of strings and dates and a lot of other utility methods are available in that library. So I'm here simply using one method that is uppercase. So basically it is going to convert this particular line into uppercase. So it's very simple and basic program. So I'm going to open this with the live server. And as expected, it has converted this word or the sentence into uppercase. In the console, there is no error at all. Now everything is working fine. So what is the need of Webpack or the model bundlers? So let me tell you that there are two problems in this old approach. First one is the order of the script tags is important. So for example, if I put this user script on the top of this Lodash, see what happens. I'm going to save this. And after it refreshes, you will see that uncaught reference error underscore is not defined. So that is the first problem. The order of the script is important when we are writing the JavaScript in this old syntax. The second problem is, let me reorder the script tags. The second problem is that, let me go to the browser. Another problem that exists with this old approach is that it pollutes the global scope. Let me explain this. So Lodash library is creating one global object which is called as underscore and it is attached to the window. So we have got window object, right? And then there is this underscore. Okay. So you can see that this underscore object is being attached to this window object. And then we can access this methods like uppercase or whatever methods that uh, Lodash is providing, we can access it like this. But the problem is that it has polluted the global scope. What it means is that anyone can come and override this underscore object or the variable. So I can say underscore is equal to null. And now if I try to access underscore dot capitalize or anything, it won't work. So you can see that it can't read capitalize or even if I try to access a uppercase, it is saying that it can't understand this uppercase because underscore has been overwritten. So that's the problem with this old approach. Now let us see how the Webpack solves these problems. So in Webpack, what we do is we create this index.js. This is the main uh, user-defined JavaScript that we want to write, which is put into the separate file under the source directory. And instead of uh, using the script tag to load this Lodash, we are using the modules, okay? So we are using import syntax, and then we want to use this uppercase. So we have imported this uppercase member from this Lodash library, and then used in our script. So what Webpack does is that it combines this Lodash library plus our user-defined JavaScript into one file and it is called as bundle main.js. So in the disk directory, it will create the main.js after we run the webpack command. So I'm going to execute that webpack, uh, webpack command now. npx webpack. And you will notice that in the disk directory, main.js will be created. So you can this main.js is created here and it contains the Lodash as well as our user defined JavaScript. And also there is index.html that we have. So let me show you quickly this webpack config.js. So what is happening here is that we are using this HTML webpack plugin. So basically what it is doing is that it is taking this index.html file from the public directory and then it is copying it to the disk directory. And after this bundle is created main.js, that main.js has been embedded into the index.html. And then, which we can serve through the server. So let me open this index.html now. So 
So the live server is up and running and we can see that the output is over here. So since we are not using that script tags, that ordering of the tags is not relevant here. So that problem is solved. So another problem this webpack is solving is that it is preventing the pollution of global scope. So what I mean by that is that if you do window dot underscore, it should not return anything. But so you can see that it is still polluting the global scope, but it is not the wider problem. It is problem with the Lodash library itself. So you can remove this global scope with this function underscore dot no conflict. And now if you do window dot underscore, so you can see that it is saying undefined. So if you use any other library, you will not uh, see the pollution of the global scope. It is only the problem with this Lodash library itself. That's it. But otherwise, both the problems are solved. There is no pollution of the global scope as well as we don't have to worry about the ordering of the script text as well. And that's the advantage of Webpack. Thanks for watching.